At Gordon, we belong to a faith community, so we share a common set of Christian convictions. We agree about basic Christian doctrines, and that gives us a freedom to see how those doctrines, how those beliefs apply in a, a wide range of venues, to, to take what we believe and experiment a little bit, see how it, how it works out in our area, in our, our research, in our lives. Uh, and that's where the freedom comes, that no one's looking over your shoulder to say, hmm, do you think you're straying a little bit too far that way? Do you think you're straying too far that way? There's really a, a confidence and a trust that because we share the core convictions, um, we trust one another's good judgment. We, we trust people to, uh, to make the most of what they've been given uh, and to take risks. Uh, risks are always a bit scary, uh, both for those who do them and then those who are watching. Uh, in the history department, um, history majors take a class called historiography, which is really about how historians in the past have approached the writing of history. Uh, and in this class, we talk about how a Christian worldview shapes one's historiography. And, you know, I tell my students that I think being a Christian makes me a better historian than I might be otherwise. Uh, that the Christian worldview equips me for observing the world from a good vantage point, a vantage point that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it gives me a motivation to study history, uh, that all people are God's children, uh, that they're created in the image of God and therefore inherently valuable, uh, worthy of study. You know, sometimes a student might be tempted to roll their eyes or shrug their shoulders when you're introducing them to a culture that seems so far removed from their own life. Uh, but as a Christian historian, I feel that I'm following Christ's commandment. Christ was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And he said to love your neighbor as yourself. And I'll, I'll tell my students that you can't love your neighbor uh, if you don't understand their background. You're, you're not very good at loving unless you know where someone's coming from. Uh, and I say for a Christian historian, your neighbor isn't uh, just someone from this century. You know, Christ in the parable of the Good Samaritan pushes the boundary uh, beyond religious and ethnic identities. And I, I think as a historian, you have to say uh, you have a, a, a calling to try to seek to understand people who, who live not only in different places of different faith backgrounds, but in, in, in different eras. I also think that's something that sets Gordon apart from other schools with good history programs. Uh, to have a, a program where we, uh, where we bring students in and expose them to the different career paths available, whether it's being a curator, being an archivist, um, working on the administrative side of things, uh, being a researcher. Uh, there's so many uh, doing the historical interpretation uh, for people who, who come. We have people who work at Plymouth Plantation, at Sturbridge Village. Uh, to be able to be exposed to those different opportunities, jobs that, that they, might not know have, they might not have known about. Um, so we have several courses in public history and museum studies uh, to equip people for that. And then we encourage them to get their feet wet, to do internships.